for Historic Environment Scotland in what's called the Heritage Management Directorate. And I work in a team that deals with um, the legal protection of archaeological sites through designation as scheduled monuments. And your conference organiser just asked me to give you a very brief update today on the creation of Historic Environment Scotland, which I gather we can abbreviate to HES. So Historic Environment Scotland is a brand new organisation which incorporates the responsibilities of the Royal Commission on the Ancient Historical Monuments of Scotland and also Historic Scotland. So the decision to merge these two bodies was taken by the Scottish Government uh, two or three years ago now. And in 2012-13 they did quite a detailed options appraisal of um, the way in which um, this should be done. The outcome of that process was an act of the Scottish Parliament um, passed right at the end of 2014, um, which actually sets out in law the functions that the new body will have. And we actually began operating on the 1st of October, so we're just five weeks old at the moment. And we also have uh, charitable status, um, which is a new departure for Historic Scotland. One of the interesting things um, about, about the new body, as I've said, is that its functions are actually set out in, in law uh, in the terms of the 2014 Act. And this gives us you know, a, a good degree of security going forward to the future. Um, so the Act says, the Act says that our functions will include identifying and recording the historic environment, which I think formerly is a, a function that's been quite heavily associated with our camps. Uh, and also understanding and interpreting the historic environment. And I think our camps have been to the fore there as well. Uh, also, learning about educating others about the historic environment. I think there's a mix of, of, kind of old our camps and HS functions. Protecting and managing the historic environment. Um, possibly here we're, we're talking about some of the historic Scotland functions, for example, around designation and thinking about scheduling monuments and listing buildings and conserving and enhancing the historic environment. Um, and there we can think about things like um, the properties in care, which Historic Scotland um, opens to the public but also conserves. And I'm thinking about things like what was the Historic Scotland Grants Programme. So how will the new body be different? Well, we'll be a non-departmental public body led by a board. Um, it's an arrangement that former Archams will be used to, but it's new for Historic Scotland. And um, the board members will also be the charity trustees, uh, and they are led by the chair, who is Jane Ryder Obi, and she's the sort of conduit for communication between the board and the Scottish ministers. So the board is responsible, amongst other things, for agreeing the priorities for the new organisation with Scottish ministers. Um, there's a degree of independence in how the organisation operates, but we are still accountable to Scottish ministers through our board, and in turn, Scottish ministers are accountable to the Scottish Parliament for uh, the operation of the new body. And the sort of status we have is, is broadly similar to um, you know, partners like the National Library, National Galleries, National Museums, and on the natural heritage side, uh, Scottish Natural Heritage, which are similarly um, NDPBs. So a few little practical matters. Um, what will happen to Historic Scotland membership? Well, nothing. It will continue. Um, and I understand that the actual Historic Scotland branding is going to continue for the properties in care and visitor attractions. So let's go back. Um, and of course, access to the properties will, will remain there for visitors. Will there be a new website? Yes, there will, but it's coming next year. So for now, um, if you continue to access the Historic Scotland and Archives, Archives websites, um, they're still up and running for now. And access to the National Collections, of course, will continue. And I'm thinking there about the what was formerly known as the National Monument Record of Scotland, or alternatively the Archives Collection. Um, you can still consult that at um, John Sinclair House, as previously, and the Canmore website also continues. There are, though, a few changes um, on a sort of nitty-gritty level, and some of these are brought in by the 2014 Act. Um, one of these is my own work area, a concerned scheduled monuments. 
So um, the Act confirms and sets out some legislation that has the HES has uh, a duty to schedule monuments, um, but there will also be a new right of appeal against designation um, for the owners of monuments. Previously, Historic Scotland ran something called a scheduled monument consent scheme on behalf of Scottish ministers, and that was where um, people could seek consent to do works on scheduled monuments, um, a, a variety of, of activity, even if it's beneficial to the monument, um, still needs scheduled monument consent, and a change now is that um, HES will um, have the power to refuse or grant consent in its own right, um, but there will also be a new right of appeal to Scottish ministers if consent is refused. And this was something the government wanted to introduce, I think, to, to bring more fairness into the system and also to bring um, the um, protection of scheduled monuments into line with the planning process and, and arrangements which already exist um, in the planning process. And when we come to listed buildings, um, it's, it's broadly very similar. Um, we've got a duty in law now to list um, but there's also a right of appeal against designation for owners. Um, and the, the second point here is quite useful for us. Um, we've got the ability to say if we list something, we can say what is not to be included in that listing. And for example, if, uh, if an interesting house has a very uninteresting boiler room or something of that nature, um, we can actually for the first time say that it's not included in the listing. So in that situation, if something is excluded, um, there's no need to go and get scheduled monument consent if you're going to change its character. Um, so this is designed to make this thing a bit more flexible. Now, listed building consent is something that has always been um, administered by local planning authorities, not by Historic Scotland. Um, in the past, when the local authority was minded to grant listed building consent, it had a duty to notify Historic Scotland at the end of the process. Um, that's changing, and now um, Historic Environment Scotland will be consulted um, as soon as an application for listed building consent comes in. So we hope this will give us more ability to influence outcomes and, and act in a more constructive way. And uh, I, I put on the left the, the sorts of things where local authorities need to consult, consult HES. So it's um, you know category A and B listed buildings, demolitions, it's very conservation area consent, and also um, applications by local authorities themselves. And if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of our work, um, we're introducing a new portal uh, where you can look at our decisions, you can see um, some of the buildings and monuments that we've been designating, or um, in this day and age it's often amending existing older designations, bringing them up to modern standards. Um, so you can go and look at that. You can also look at applications for scheduled monument consent that people have made, uh, and you can see um, what decisions we've reached on them and why. Uh, and for the moment, that's housed on the old Historic Scotland website. Um, but as I say, if you, if you want to go and have a look there, you can see what we're up to. And again, this is to sort of bring us into line with planning authorities who um, have planning portals um, where people can sort of, members of the public can, can scrutinise the operation of the planning process. So what benefits should we expect from the new organisation? Well, I've, I've just passed um, three points off um, one of our websites here. Um, firstly, um, it's intended that the new organisation should be more resilient and sustainable um, and effective in promoting and protecting Scotland's historic environment. And I think that sort of reflects the fact that there are a number of options which the government could have taken in rationalising historic Scotland and, and our plans, and they've chosen to, um, to create a new body, to invest in a new body, and to set out our functions in law. So really I think that's a kind of a, a vote of confidence in us and, and a positive thing for the future. Uh, secondly, it's intended that the new organisation will play a lead role in supporting and enabling um, the implementation of the historic environment strategy our place in time. And I, I think in a nutshell, um, what that's saying is um, we should be better placed to basically maximise the contribution of heritage to um, the life of the nation, really. That's that's what um, the strategy boils down to, um, making sure we're making the most of our heritage. And finally, um, we hope that the, there will be the opportunity to align our activities across the sector and create common agendas, it says, between HES and other organisations and groups. And I think we can boil that down to just um, working more effectively um, with other organisations out there that are interested in heritage. So there haven't been any, any sort of restructurings of the organisation yet. Um, but it's, it's kind of early days, uh, we're, we're, we're 
creating infrastructure, and, and I think um, you know over the next year or two um, we may see um, we may see some remodeling designed to, to help bring out these benefits. So I hope that's that's helpful in, in giving you an idea of what's been going on. Thanks very much.